So what we have discovered in 30 years of research, there's six main uh, time zones that people live in. Two focused on the past, two on the present, and two on the future. The people who focus on the past either th remember all the good old times, successes, happy birthdays, nostalgia. These are the people who, who keep the family record, the family books, who have the fa family rituals. There are other people who focus only on regret, only on failure, only on all the things that went wrong. So we call those focus past positive or past negative. There are two ways to be present-oriented. The most obvious is to be hedonistic, that you live for pleasure and you avoid pain. You seek novelty, you seek sensation. There are other people who are present-oriented because they say, it doesn't pay the plan. My life is, is faded, faded by my religion, faded by my poverty, faded by the conditions of, that I'm living under. Most of us are here because we are future-oriented, that we have learned to, to work rather than play, to, to resist temptation. But there's another way to be future-oriented, depending on your religion, Life begins after the death of the mortal body. To be future-oriented, you have to trust that when you make a decision about the future, it's going to carry out. If you have uh, great inflation, you don't put money in the bank because you can't trust the future. Uh, if you have, uh, if there's instability in your family, adults can't keep their promises to you. The closer you are to the equator, uh, the more present-oriented you are. The more you're in an environment where climate doesn't change, it gives you a set of imagining sameness, rather, the whole way of life. We all begin life as present hedonists, all of us. I mean, at the breast, at the bottle, we want pleasure, we want to avoid pain. And one of the things that families do, and especially school, my, my sense is the purpose of schooling is to take present-oriented little beasts and make them more future-oriented, and some cultures make them more past-oriented. In America, a child drops out of school every nine seconds. This is worse for, for kids from a minority background, and it's worse for boys than girls. There's actually a disaster recipe developing among boys in America, literally dropping out of high school, college, and it's not simply poor performance. One of the problems is a recent study shows that by the time a boy is 21, he has spent at least 10,000 hours playing video games alone, probably more watching pornography alone. And you put that together, it means, A, they haven't learned social skills, emotional, social intelligence, but also it means that they live in a world that they create. They're playing Warcraft, they're playing these other games, which is exciting. In fact, just, I just heard the other day that these game companies are now going to uh, uh, develop 3D games so that the, ga the world will be all around you. Their brains are being digitally rewired, which means they will never fit in a traditional classroom, which is analog. Somebody talks at you without even the nice pictures, meaning it's boring. I mean, you control nothing. You sit there passively. And if you want to change the curriculum, I, I understand the traditionalists here say, we've got to go back to reading, writing, arithmetic. Disaster. These kids will never fit into that. They have to be in a situation where they are controlling something. And school is set up, you control nothing. You're passive. There's, school is all about learning, delay of gratification, literally endlessly. I think we are underestimating the power of technology in, in rewiring young people's brains. Kids don't wear wristwatches. They say it's a single function device. You don't, you don't waste time with a single function device. And they live in a digital thing. What matters is the second. You know, uh, I, didn't, I didn't mention one of the things that gets people upset in America is how long it takes to boot up your computer and how long it takes to download something. Less than a minute. That makes people angry. So, so it becomes an emotional thing. You get, you get angry waiting in line, waiting for services. Waiting is a waste of time, even if it's waiting for your computer to boot up. So I think there's a fundamental change going on in our culture that I think we adults are not realizing that kids are totally different than, than we were.